uh, in meditation this week with the Lord and thinking and praying, a, a phrase came into my mind. And I don't believe that in all of my years of preaching, and by the way, I've been preaching a while now, that I've ever preached a full sermon on this phrase. And uh, it's the phrase, filled with all the fullness of God. And as I was thinking about that, I began to pray and I said, Lord, that's what I want in my life. That's what Bob Millsaps wants. That's what your pastor wants. I want to be filled with all the fullness of God. I, I don't want just a little bit of Jesus, all right? I want to be all in. I want 100% of me to be committed to Christ 100% of the time, right? How many of you say, I'd like to be fully consecrated, fully dedicated, amen? I don't want, and, and besides that, I don't want just like 80 of what God has for me. I want everything God has for me, right? I want all of His blessings. I want everything that He has. And I know it sounds selfish today, but I want that for me and I want that for you as well. I want us to get all that we can from God. A man by the name of Wilbur Reese wrote a poem that's complete satire. And if you know me, I, I like satire. Uh, it touches me because there's always a little bit of truth in satire. Right? That's what makes it a little humorous. In fact, I looked this man up, the author of this poem up, and uh, he passed away last July at 93 years of age. And I believe he must have written this during the Civil Rights Movement. But this is what he said. He said, I would like to buy $3 worth of God, please. Not enough to explode my soul or disturb my sleep, but just enough to equal a cup of warm milk. Or a snooze in the sunshine. I don't want enough of God to make me love a black man or pick beats with a migrant. I want ecstasy, not transformation. I want warmth of the womb, not a new birth. I want a pound of the eternal in a paper sack. I would like to buy $3 worth of God, please. Wow. I'll tell you what, I don't want $3 worth of God. I want all of God. I want the fullness of of God. I want everything that he has. I, in fact, I want to be so full of God that if a mosquito bites me, the mosquito goes flying away singing, there is power, power, wonderful work and power in the blood of the Lamb. Come on. I'm telling you, I just want to be full of God. Hello? And I believe that God is calling for you and for me to experience that fullness of the presence of God in our life. At the end of this service, we'd like to pray with you about those things. And I'd like for you to open your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. And I'd like to read some verses for you. By the way, this is a prayer that the Apostle Paul wrote. This is in the New Testament. If you're looking for a church today that, that, that uh, you know, wants you want a book report about something, uh, you got the wrong church. I'm a Bible preacher. I preach the Bible, all right? And so uh, that's who I am. So here it is, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. And when I, as I read this, you'll notice that I'm going to add a little phrase in, okay? And, 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 and I've studied the Greek in this, and it actually, the Greek fully means this. I'm going to add the phrase in order that. Now, the scripture just says that, but really the intent is in order that, all right? So let me read it, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. How many of you got it? Amen. You, you brought your Bible. Amen. Awesome. It says this, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, in order that He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man, in order that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith <coughs> in order that being rooted and grounded in love you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and knowledge and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ with patches passes knowledge in order that you may be filled with all the fullness Amen. I, I, 
powerful, powerful scripture today. And I want to investigate that phrase today by asking some questions, all right? My first question is this. Is this phrase filled with all the fullness of God? Is that phrase just, how should I put it, spiritual holy talk that has very little to do with our lives as believers? Or, or is, can this really become a reality in our life? And I tell you, this is meat here. This is not Christianity light. This is going to give you like some meat and potatoes and steak today, all right? But I want you to think about that phrase for a moment because it's kind of difficult for me to get my, my head around that phrase. It sounds too incredible. Filled me with all the fullness of God. Wow. That, that's, that's incredible. It, it sounds as though I don't in the natural have the capacity to live in and, and, and to function and to walk that out. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Amen. Excuse me. I just need a little, a little shot of that there. Thank you. Oh, that's better. Uh, because how many of you know you've got to start with knowing who God is? You've got to start this with God. And and if you know anything about God, or if you've ever met God, let me tell you something. He's not small. God is big. Tell your neighbor today, God is big. And I believe that God is even bigger than the very universe that He created. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing, all-wise. God is love. God is truth. God is justice. In Him is all wisdom and all knowledge. And so it can't be a spatial thing, right? Be, be, because it, it has to be spiritual and relational. And so when we think of the grandeur and the majesty and the glory of God. How's all that going to fit into us, right? I mean, in the natural sense, it's, it's an impossibility. And then I also think of myself, all right, while God is big, I'm small. I mean, you know, in relative proportion. I don't have any delusions of grandeur, okay? I, I don't see myself, at least in the natural, as having the capacity to take and be filled with the fullness of God. And yet the Word of God here seems to be challenging my mind, am I right? From a natural viewpoint, all right, I'm just here today and gone tomorrow. I'm a vapor that quickly vanishes away. I'm a flower that quickly fades. I, I'm just... Bob, all right. And now here's the thing. When I was meditating on this week, I could easily think of Jesus being filled with all the fullness of God, right? It's not hard for me to think of Jesus. And Jesus was fully human. He took on flesh in all of that way. In fact, the book of Colossians tells us that in Him, in Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so it's not hard for me to think of Jesus as being able to do this. And I think of like somebody like Paul the Apostle, right? Wow. Paul was caught up into the third heaven, shown great mysteries, had to have a thorn in the flesh so he would stay humble. He suffered for Christ. Was, he gave up things, sacrificed, even never got married. He was beaten, stoned, imprisoned, shipwrecked. He was a spiritual giant. And so I can see Paul being filled with all the fullness of God. And, and I, I think of someone like Moses, right? I mean, how many days was Moses up in the mountain with God? I think he fasted one time 80 days without food, a supernatural fast. How incredible that was. His face literally glowed when he came down out of the mountain. So when I think of Moses, I think, yeah, Moses, he could be filled with all the fullness of God. And I think of Peter, right? Peter walked along the, 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 the way, and the Bible tells us that they used to lay people along the the road so that Peter's shadow would fall on them and then they would get healed. And so uh, when I think of Peter, it's easy for me to think, yeah, Peter could be filled with all the fullness of God. And Elijah the same way. I mean, you know, he called fire down from heaven. He prayed that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain. He took on all the prophets of Baal. I mean, come on, I can think of them. But when I think about Bob, let me tell you, it gets a little bit more difficult because you see, I know Bob. 
I know Bob's weaknesses. I know his failings. And I, and I know the Bob that sometimes gets discouraged. How many of you know it's okay to be an honest preacher? Hello? And I think to myself, can Bob be filled with the fullness of God? And the truth is, if I'm going to believe this word, is there anybody in the house that believes the word of God? If we believe this word, then we can be filled with the fullness of God. And I ask myself, have I ever experienced that? The truth, I don't really know the answer to that question. It's, I mean, I've had, you know, I've been filled with the Spirit, and you know, I've had some amazing experiences with God, and I know Christ. I know I'm saved. I, I hear the voice of the Lord speaking to me, and you know, not an audible voice, but that still small voice, and I have a walk with God. But, 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 but there's something inside of me that just refuses to kind of rush past that phrase. And I'm not going to hurry past it, right? And I'm not going to just tell myself, oh, you got that done. Check who got the t-shirt, you know, put it on Facebook. I've been filled with the fullness. I don't want to be that kind of a way. What this is for me, it's like a giant carrot out there. Filled with the fullness of God. What would my life be like if I was filled with the fullness of God? What would this church be like if even 25% or 50% of us were filled with the fullness of God? Can Bob be filled with the fullness of God? I believe he can. And the question becomes, then, well, what about you? Can you be filled with the fullness of God? Amen. Yes, you can. Wait a minute here. That's not just in my Bible, is it? Is that, is that phrase in your Bible over there? It's in your Bible. Is it in your Bible? Come on, if it's in your Bible, then it must be for you. Hello? Come on. I just want to make a declaration today that this is the year of the fullness of God at Fountain of Life Christian Center. Come on. Let's go after God. Let's not just see this as some impossible thing that no way we could ever do that. Let's say, God, fill us with the fullness of God.